What if you could turn your house into a game? This is the one question that made me challenge myself to work on this crazy VR project. In the previous part, I'll show you how I was able to use the player space to create walls around the player and let him configure it himself. But now it is time for the hardest part making an enemy and after some thinking i think i found the perfect fit you see in my game as the player configured the room itself the environment has an infinite number of configurations which means that if i want to make my enemy go from one point to another we need to calculate every time the best way for the enemy to move across the room while avoiding all of the furniture which is as complicated to make as plugging a usb on the first try so how can we avoid this and that's where it hit me make it climb and in the end what is scary and can climb stuff no no perfect so i decided to go on sketchfab to search for a cool 3d model to use and found this nice looking one made by developer so now that we have the 3d model of the spider the next thing to do is make our spider walk but for this we have a big problem more like eight problems in fact to create a walk cycle for human, we can create the movement of the leg by stirring a single position, called a key, and then blend between each key to create the animation. Now, this method works very well, but it's never perfect in all case scenario, which means that we need to create more and more animation to fit all particular case, and choose which animation to play each time. So yes, animation is hard work, and now imagine doing this not for two legs, but hey. If there is something I learned while working with Unity, is that if something is too hard to make, you are using the wrong tool. And the tool who is going to save us is this, inverse kinematic. Instead of moving the leg to a certain position by moving the bone, inverse kinematic does the inverse and use the target to move the leg. Following this awesome video from Collier, I was able to move the target to create a realistic movement in five steps. First, you fix the target on the ground, then you mark where you want the leg to step next, then you check the distance between the target and the step, and if the distance is greater than a certain threshold, you move the target to the step position. Finally, what's left for us to do is move the other 7 legs this way and delay the movement to have a zigzag walking pattern. And just like that, our spider animation is automatically handled, but most of all, it will always work on any type of ground. Okay, so our spider can work, but let's make it learn how to climb now. One eternity later. This was a disaster. I lost so many times trying everything. And that's where I found this awesome GitHub repository. So the moral of the story is that Phil's94, thank you for making this. You are awesome. And to always make your research before trying to redo everything on your own. So one of the main inspiration for this project was the crab head from Half-Life Alex. The crab head is this terrifying bloodthirsty creature, but the most terrifying part for me is that it can actually jump to your face. This mechanism is so cool and works so well in VR, so let's just straight up try to make it work for spider. Now if this is our spider and this is the player head, how can we make our spider jump from here to here? And the answer is this, the mighty ballistic equation, giving us the correct angle to shoot our spider, written in a language that few could comprehend. But we managed to break the code. And if we apply the result to our spider, yep, it worked flawlessly. So now using this, I made my spider work to the player and if it reach a certain distance, it will jump. Okay, so we succeeded to make the complete spider movement and I'm really happy of how it turned out, but as fun as it was to make this, we are still missing the piece of resistance to let the player fight back. And I think it will be only fair to give him a proper weapon, in my case, a shotgun. To do so, here is a little trick just for you. First, make the shotgun follow the position 
off one of the two hand and then simply aim the gun at the other end and this way you will get a proper smooth two hand movement with the weapon but now our hands are looking kind of off right now because they don't look like they are holding the weapon so whoosh we can simply hide them and just add a thick pair of hands in the scene that will hold the gun correctly the player will never notice the difference for the shooting i've added this nice particle system a shooting sound effect and this little recall animation. This doesn't seem like much, but god, the result is so satisfying to play with. By the way, if you want to know how I made this shotgun, I will release a tutorial on my Patreon that will cover every step of the process. So if you want to support the channel, have access to more than 18 exclusive tutorials, like this tutorial on how to make a fruit ninja in VR, join us, the link is in the description below. Now, by adding a cone collider at the top of the gun, I was able to create a list of all the spiders that we are currently aiming at. So the only thing that we need to do is make all the spider in this list explode when we shoot. The next thing that I did was make this script which will spawn a wave of spider that we need to fight back. We work really hard for this and now we are ready to use all of these ingredients in the actual environment that we made in last video. This is where we will know if our enemy works or if we need to redo it completely. Now, I wanted the spider to not just appear out of nowhere, so I made this little crack animation to make it feel like the spider is digging through the wall. And after some adjustment, like turning the light down and using this flashlight on the shotgun, I add my result. Even if this feels like small step, when I look at what we accomplished since the beginning, I'm really happy on how it turned out. And I guess it just shows how hard it is to make an enemy. Thankfully, it didn't feel like I was alone in this project making this, thanks to the awesome people who made the awesome asset that I could use for this project. And thanks to you also who give me a lot of feedbacks. I know that everybody has that on YouTube, but if you could leave a like and subscribe and share this video, it will mean the world to me and would help me spread the word of this project. Now, if you want to try the game yourself and configure your own room, I've published a simple prototype version here on this itch.io page, which you will be able to find in the description. It's free, of course, but keep in mind that this is not a finished project at all. And of course, if you want to participate on the project and get access to exclusive content, go check out my Patreon, link in the description. And on that matter, a big shout out to all of my Patreon who joined lately and are on the screen right now. You guys are the best. Have a great day and see you soon. Bye bye.